When you're solving an equation that has a radical sign in it, the first step you want to do is make sure your radical is by itself on one side of the equation. Um, this radical is by itself already. There's no numbers on the outside of the radical on either side, um, so there's no numbers we need to move over. So once you've made sure that your radical is isolated, it's by itself, to undo a square root, we can square both sides. Squaring is the inverse of taking a square root. So if we square both sides, it will cancel the square root on the left-hand side. So this square root sign goes away. Um, it got canceled by the squared here. So all that's left over here on the left-hand side is what was underneath the radical, the 2x plus 21. Now be very careful when you square the right-hand side. Um, a common mistake is for students to just square the x and square the 3. What you have to be careful is when you have a binomial, when you have two terms, um, you need to make sure you write it out twice and then use FOIL to simplify it. Squaring something just means multiplying it by itself. And when I multiply two binomials, I need to distribute the x first. That would give me x squared plus 3x. And then distribute the 3 that would give me another 3x and a plus 9. So on the right-hand side, I actually have x squared plus 6x plus 9. So students that make the mistake of just squaring each number, they miss out on this middle term here. On the left-hand side, I can just bring down the 2x plus 21. So now that I've gotten rid of the radical sign, I'm left with an equation that has an x squared in it. This means that I have a quadratic equation. There's a couple different ways to solve a quadratic. Um, you can try to factor it. You can use the quadratic formula. You could graph it. You could complete the square. I think the fastest way, usually, is to try to factor it. In order to do that, you need to make sure it's set equal to 0 first. Um, and I find the easiest way to do that is to pick the side that already has the x squared on it and move everything over to that side. So I'm going to move everything over to the right-hand side. Um, I can get rid of this 2x by subtracting it from both sides. Um, and make sure you put it with the other x term. Those are the like terms that go together. Um, and then I can get rid of this plus 21 by subtracting 21 from both sides. Um, and these are both the constants, so those are the like terms. On the left-hand side, these terms both canceled out. So all that's left is a 0. There's nothing left over there. I can just bring down the x squared. 6x's minus 2x's is 4x's. And then 9 minus 21 is negative 12. So once you get to this point, if you wanted to, you could use the quadratic formula. You could use 1 for a, 4 for b, and negative 12 for c. I find that it's faster to factor it, but if you prefer the quadratic formula, that's fine too. You'll get the same answer either way. So if I'm going to factor this one, I know that I need um, to put an x in the first two spots here, because I need to get an x squared. I need two numbers that multiply to a negative 12, so that means I'm going to need one to be a positive and one to be a negative. And I need the middle terms to end up with a 4 x's. So if I look at, think about my combinations that multiply to 12, I could do 1 and 12, 2 and 6, or 3 and 4. One of them is going to be positive and one's going to be negative. So the combination that would give me a positive 4 would be if I did 2 and 6 and I made the 2 the negative one. So plus 6 minus 2. If you're a little rusty on your factoring, you might want to double check, use FOIL to check it and make sure it really does come out to this. So once you get it factored, you're going to use the zero product property. That says that if you have two values that are being multiplied to zero, one of them or both of them have to be zero. That's the only way you can get numbers to multiply to zero. So if I have two factors here, and I know they multiply to 0, that means either the first one, the x plus 6, that one has to be equal to 0, or the second one, the x minus 2, that one has to be equal to 0. 
And these are pretty straightforward equations to solve for x. So I can just subtract 6 from both sides, and I get negative 6 for one possible answer. And then I can add 2 to both sides to get positive 2 as the second answer. Now the next most common mistake that students make is they get to this point here and they say, okay, I'm done, here are my two answers. The problem is that when you're solving a radical equation, sometimes you end up with what's called an extraneous solution. Um, sometimes in the process of solving it, when you, when you do this part here where you square both sides, sometimes that makes you end up with an answer that's not really an answer. So it's important to go back and check both of your answers. Sometimes one of them will work, or two, or maybe none of them will work. So it's important to check both of them. When you check your answer, you always want to go back to the original equation before you did anything to it. The original equation was the square root of 2x plus 21 equals x plus 3. So we want to go and plug in negative 6 both places we see in x. Um, so if I plug in a negative 6, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. So I have negative 12 plus 21. And then I'm going to plug a negative 6 on the right hand side. Negative 12 plus 21 is 9, so I end up with the square root of 9. And then negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. The square root of 9 is a positive 3, and positive 3 is not the same thing as negative 3. That means that this answer here is an extraneous answer. So negative 6 is not an answer. Now don't just assume the second one will work because the first one didn't. Sometimes both of them are extraneous, so make sure to check them all. So if I plug in a 2 where x is, I would get the square root of 2 times 2 is 4. So I have a 4 plus 21. And then 2 plus 3 is 5. 4 plus 21 is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So in this case, they did both come out to the same number on both sides. So that means that our one answer for this equation is x equals 2.